Hi, and welcome back to Tech Days. My name is Fries Jankowski, and today it's my honor to have an interview with Patrick Abart, who is Principal Solution Architect and Data Scientist on Atos Austria. Patrick will tell us a little bit about the project Episys, the Epidemic and Outbreak Management Solutions. So it's a pleasure to have you here, Patrick. Hello. The pleasure is on my side. Hi. Ah, that's perfect. That's great. And with that, like it is as if we were in the same room, I would say. So uh, let's say, Patrick, I, I have a couple of questions on Episys and I'm, I'm thinking or I'm pretty sure that you're the right one that can answer those questions to me. So um, could you please just like very briefly describe what Episys is and, and how it works? Well, Episys is uh, the epidemiological uh, uh, application that the city of Vienna uses uh, to uh, keep an overview of all their epidemic cases, uh, starting from uh, the very first uh, moment that a person calls and uh, has an inquiry about their status and might fulfill a case, all the way back uh, to the recovery, uh, keeping track of it, uh, contact tracing, and uh, providing uh, vital information uh, for all the stakeholders in the process. Wow. Well, that, that, that's pretty amazing. It's like, um, how can like, it support strategic decisions like for policymakers and, and public health authorities? Is there something would you like point out? Well, primarily it's there for the public health uh, workers uh, of the city of Vienna, so in German Amtsarzt, and uh, they would have their, their information there about a certain person, the catchment area or the surrounding of this person, uh, where does she come from and so on. But yes, of course, if you collect all the data uh, that, uh, that uh, the, the city of Vienna is obliged to have, uh, then you can use it also to make uh, strategic decisions and uh, to, to see, for example, you can make clustering and you can see if uh, certain areas are more prone to infections than others and right. so on, yes. Okay, that's amazing. I, I saw you also, you also shared a graphic with us, so maybe we can just have a short overview on the graphic itself. Could you just like lead yes. us through a little bit? That would be awesome. Yes, okay. So just, I mean, there's a lot of text here, but just principally, normally when you have uh, the doubt, uh, you've maybe uh, contacted the flu or you have a dry cough, which are both symptoms of potentially having COVID. So you uh, might call and if you're calling then, uh, uh, if, uh, the, this can be a call center, but you can also contact uh, uh, your, your physician and talk with him. Then uh, this information gets uh, into our system over an interface that we have created in the last uh, three months to the already existing application. Okay. And in, once you're in the system, uh, you're able to, um, uh, or the, 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 the physicians of the city of Vienna, public health physicians are able to, uh, to see what kind of symptoms do you have, do those symptoms gradually improve or not, and you're able to contribute to this with a mobile app that we've also uh, uh, helped to develop, where you can uh, say, okay, my status uh, has degraded, or uh, I have a lot of fever now, so please, uh, uh, keep care of me and uh, yeah so basically it gives a good overview about the development of the of the cases as a as a whole but also individually wow i think i think that's that that's pretty amazing i'm just like switching back to you that was like a great great overview of uh, what episys is but it's like what do you think who, who can use episys like the solution and, and what is required typically for implementation if we would now just like put it anywhere else so there are basically two streams where you can go. One is uh, we have implemented this uh, in the, within the, the, the security network of the city of Vienna and the city of Vienna of, also wants to keep it that way. But of course, we've also got Epimon, which is more or less the same solution, uh, but can be used in the cloud. So basically, okay. if you are um, a physician that is frustrated because uh, uh, the IT infrastructure or the, the, the systems that you're using or you may be playing around with Excel all the time does not live up to your expectation, what I could understand, <laughs> then uh, you could use it uh, out of the cloud and you could uh, instantly start uh, with this application uh, to upload your Excel to the application and from there on have one single point of truth and distribute, for example, the tasks to different workers who would do contact tracing and so on. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, th that's amazing. But now it's like, how, how long does it take to train people or the employees to use it and or to get onboarded with that solution? So there are also, again, multiple people who would work with it. So um, uh, I would say somebody who has been um, a power user in other applications, like, for example, Excel or Word or Outlook, 
uh, would easily adapt to the system. The user interface is very intuitive. It comes actually from a CRM system. So it's not like the, the normal healthcare style application where you sometimes wonder what kind of, uh, I don't know, interface it is, uh, but it is quite intuitive. On the other hand, uh, there is even a, an application or app that was developed that is uh, even more easier to use. So there are multiple ways of, of accessing the information and also for people who are not uh, who are not actually exposed too much to the health field or to computers at all okay okay so that that's great and and that's like a big adoption or so, sounds quite easy to get adopted to that system or something like that if you're used to like uh, common common applications we already know a question that might arise so at the current point in like are there any other countries or or or, or governments using it and and is it available already in different languages um you have it at least in english and german okay uh, so crm is based i think in at least uh, 33 languages wow translated actually i mean it just takes an excel you export it uh, to your language so sometimes even the medical language can be different and then you import it again so the whole process if you know what you're doing is like 30 minutes to one hour uh, just to translate it to another language so that is one thing the other thing is basically uh which countries have we already presented or are we right. dealing with so England, as far as I know, they've been very, very interested in it, uh, Poland. Uh, and I mean, in total, we, uh, the, the furthest that we got was to, uh, to public healthcare physicians in Senegal. Wow. They even wanted us to, to, to present it there. Yeah. Well, that, that's amazing. So we're talking about a, a lot of countries might have like different systems, different interfaces. Do we have something like standard connectors? Did we already connect to other system? What's your point of this? Okay, so um, the, the, the central system that we have in Europe, for example, uh, from the European Center of Disease Control is TESI. So we are reporting via the proxy of uh, the Austrian uh, government. Uh, we are pro uh, uh, reporting all the way up to, to TESI, if you want, in that sense. So yes, there are standards. So for example, we are supporting HL7 as a, a health interface. We're reporting also other REST uh, APIs uh, that we uh, have in the system. We're looking into FHIR, which is also a, a okay. standard that's there, but unfortunately many other systems don't yet support FHIR. So that is definitely something that is there. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that's interesting. I'm just like switching back to the, to the graphics uh, uh, very short because something that's of course very interesting is like, uh, okay, uh, so what kind of data does Epicis uh, process? How is the tracking and tracing implemented? And also from a data privacy point of view, it's like, what, what should we know about this? Okay, so uh, basically during the epidemiological crisis uh, the, or during uh, the, 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 when the case is actually gathered, you would have uh, uh, the surrounding area that is, uh, that is scattered. And this is also uh, uh, okay in the sense of uh, the epidemic law. So the epidemic law provides the, the right. legal basis for this. And of course, uh, once, uh, once all this madness hopefully is over soon and uh, we, can, we can forget about COVID if you want, then of course this data is also erased. So normally you have uh, six months after uh, the time of, uh, of the case. Uh, this is uh, the legal time span normally. Uh, this data also has to be deleted with the, um, it's called in German, the, the personal reference. So uh, uh, it's still allowed to have certain data in the system in order to learn for it in, in future, but all, all data that could possibly lead back uh, like with your name or like your personal reference data, this has to be deleted. Okay, okay, totally understand that. Wow. Yeah, and uh, that, that, just like a great and awesome solution. Is there anything else where you say like, okay, everyone should know about this. It's like not scripted, not in a PowerPoint or whatever. So it's like not the secret of how it is done. So we still uh, think we keep our IP, but it's like, what, what are like the top three things you would tell about like, what, what's EPIS is, why you should go for it or something? Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's a tough question, but I will I will I will start with one. One is that uh, APCs is still very easily uh, adaptable. So actually, the first weekend of March, we were approached on a Saturday if we could do an integration of the laboratories of Vienna. Right. I thought about it for five minutes. I said yes, <laughs> and by the end of the weekend, we had the integration done. So that is that is one thing just to point out. <coughs> it is very flexible. We can really get uh, achieve things where normally people would be saying no way. Yeah, that's one thing. Okay. Second thing is, we have developed within two weeks an application home care app uh, together with the city of Vienna, 
uh, that would allow people uh, to uh, provide uh, their their status on their own. So it's a home uh, home care system that would uh, give feedback, and where you can also add the people that are living with you. I mean, the, the, the idea is not entirely, uh, let's say, new. It actually comes from Korea, but it's I think it's a fantastic idea, and it was implemented here very fast as well. And the third thing is contact tracing. I think in the system, and I think it's the only system in the world that you would have, where all of these components are already integrated. So you have the lab report the results in it, you have the questionnaires in there, and you have the contact tracing, and you can instantly set legal measures. So for example, if you want to isolate somebody, you can also do that out of the system. Yeah? Okay, well, that's awesome. You said it, it, it's not that easy to sum up like the top three things, but. Uh, it sounded quite easy and in regards to the home care app, yes, that was inter integrated very quickly and rolled out because like I was one of the users and that was like really? wor working, working out great. Yeah, I, I, I of course had to go to, to uh, Tyrol for skiing. So that's why they put me on the list and yeah, that, that I can give yes. you a great okay. user feedback on that too. So, so, so you were the guy from Ishkil, right? <laughs> no, no, no. But this is another story. This is another story. It's not part of uh, that discussion and that interview now uh, we had here on, on Episis. Uh, Patrick, thank you very much. That was really, yeah, that was really awesome. We just like had like about 10 minutes and, and you explained the whole story and how amazing it is. And what I got out is like, so it's, it's very easy to translate. It's very easy and fast to implement. So there is nearly no point where not all the countries should have a rollout within the next four weeks, right? Perfectly, yes. Okay, <laughs> well, this is so great. Then thank you very much for that interview. Yeah, have a, a great okay. time. I know you've been working a lot over the last weeks. Thank you, bye-bye. And uh, all the best. Yes, thank you. So I think that was quite a great overview on Apesis brought to you by Patrick Avard. So if you have any further questions, I think you can find him on the network or reach out to your contacts. All further questions the Apesis will for sure be handled there. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.